Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're going to hit weather, cosmology, and an underlying impact of the sun on food and finance. But we've also got a lot of space weather to discuss, and that's where we begin. With the last 24 hours on our star, where we find continued activity at the northern active region. Coronal hole turning to the right. Lots of brightness incoming with the smaller active regions as well. Plasma filaments have remained surprisingly stable during the turn, and this morning there was a moderate M-class flare. But let's jump to the solar wind, because we've taken several impacts over the last 36 hours. First one was south-facing magnetism and triggered a level 3 solar storm. But the second and third impacts, which you can see when the purple plasma speed surges higher, those had north-facing magnetism. And here is the best visualization of how much that matters we've had since 2015. Look at the geomagnetic storm chart. First impact caused the strong storm. The subsequent impacts were stronger, faster, but their magnetic field was pointed in a way that caused deflection rather than coupling. And the solar storm levels are now lower. That's why I talk about solar wind magnetism all the time. It's the difference between pretty aurora and transformer explosions. Last space weather note this morning, while we wait for one more impact coming later tonight, this morning's M-class flare released a faint but Earth-directed CME. This is not scary, but it is one more on the way. Sunspot directly facing Earth tonight, 48-hour peak of the solar flare watch right now. Massive cold wave incoming for the eastern half of the country. I've been watching the jet stream and this is going to feel quite shocking. You know those first cold snaps of the season that make everyone sick? Yeah, have fun with that over there. Up next, a double dose of cosmology. This paper describes how the halo kinematic profile of galaxies can't be the result of dark matter particles, which is the foundational galactic physics point of the mainstream model. And then falling in line with our position, with what we've seen suggested five times in ten years, neither dark matter or dark energy are actually real. This was our position in 2012, and we've seen nothing to change our minds. Last but not least, folks, excellent look here at crop yields from a finance and food perspective and found higher geomagnetic field strength increases crop yield. That means that when the field weakens, crops do worse, which is not only like the eighth rationale for why these events are so hard on life on Earth, but it reminds us of what we can look forward to as the magnetic pole shift weakens our field again now in the modern age. Folks, the PDF of our new textbook is available at the link below. Physical copies only in person at Observer Ranch, but this is much cheaper than the physical copy, and since it's a PDF, you can search it, which many of you find more important for your research. A couple clicks away at the link below. Winter Tour starts in just a few weeks. Tickets for those events at the link below as well. A master class in surviving the Earth disaster cycle. There are only five events left in the Observer Ranch rookie season. Would love to see you guys come out there to close the year. August Dunning is coming in next week for the documentary premiere in the last Pole Shift Conference of the year. We greatly appreciate your support. We're eyes locked and dialed in on our star once again today. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.